This is the phase two I talked about earlier when we we're talking uh, with the BOJ directly. The phase two, first stage of that is the wage rises. And, you know, around those five to six percent, obviously, uh, with the big uh, car companies uh, being the biggest in the world, those wages are coming through. Now, once I get that money in my pocket, am I actually going to go and spend it and buy new goods? And am I going to be happier to pay higher prices? That's still the question mark here. So, again, that's probably going to be a little bit of an elongated cycle for the BOJ to really get confidence to start really adjusting the short-term cash rates. At the same time, uh, they want to control the yield curve, right? So they've got a bit of a, a balancing act here, I suppose. They don't want to scare people off with short rates going up aggressively while the yield long end's under pressure. So I guess what they're going to do is allow the yield curve, particularly the long ends, to start nudging higher slowly. And then if they start to get the real confidence around phase two of inflation, which is uh, demand and higher prices uh, on a sustained basis on the back of higher wages, then they'll start nudging again on the cash rates. But that can still I, seems like some time off at the moment. Can I just quickly ask something? Because you know, we, we talk almost at nauseam about all of these wage negotiations. You know, we know that the last year inflation adjusted real wages were below. So you're dealing in the negatives. And everyone has these big expectations that we're going to see it come through. And I think you've alluded to this a little bit in terms of maybe not counting chickens before they roost when it does come to consumption. But when you actually look at some of these wage increases, sure, it looks great and sexy at that initial stages, Ringo, at 5.2. But if you're someone working at, for example, a 7.11 and you're only getting, what, an extra 10, 100 yen per week in your pocket... Should we really be expecting that it's going to have that much of a significant impact? Because I would argue that, you know, international travellers coming to Japan have more of an impact in terms of spending uh, domestically than domestic people. Yeah, well, obviously the, the travel uh, is really, really cheap. I've been there twice already <laughs> uh, this year. So I and that's only the early time. part of the year. So I can, t I can tell you it's fantastic and uh, the food's fantastic and it's really, really, really cheap. Uh, but what you do notice when you go around there is signs up everywhere for uh, advertisements for people for jobs. So there's a short supply there. You know, is this the end of the wage price hikes here? Uh, I think it's probably not. So I think we're probably going to see several rounds. Again, this is phase two. It's not a, just a one-off hike and you're done. So can we get the uh, sustained buying coming through in the prices? And then it allows companies to continue on hiking rates, uh, hiking mm. wages, sorry. So this could be a virtuous cycle they're looking through. That's phase two. Phase one was just the, sure. the currency selling off imported inflation. Uh, and obviously, okay. two, if the yen stays around these levels, there's still going to be some really, really high capex going on on a relative mm -hmm. basis for these companies because they're making so much money offshore and they're so competitive. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit puzzled by the reaction from the yen because we're seeing a bit of a spike in favour of the dollar. So the yen has weakened about half a percent at 149.78. Yeah. Uh, at a time when obviously uh, an exit from ultra easy monetary policy would have been currency positive. So how do you look at that reaction? I'll come to you with two more lines to add more context to this, Hayden. One is the BOJ is saying, of course, they're paying due attention to developments in markets, financial markets, forex, and the impact on the economy. And second, they're saying the BOJ will continue, uh, actually, sorry, Japan's economy is projected to continue growing at a pace above its potential growth rate. Yeah, so I think with the yen, as I said, I think there's a clean-out that needs to happen. Uh, we can see the long-term valuations that the yen looks cheap to us, uh, but everybody's positioned for that right now. Everybody was positioning for something more aggressive here. And uh, we'll have to look, wait and see what the commentary's like later on. That may change the picture. But at this stage, I would have thought the yen could push above uh, 150, have a bit of a clean-out in the currency here, and then start to stabilise. Again, BOJ doesn't target the yen. The BOJ targets the volatility of the yen over that 12 months or two year period to ensure that the capex plans of these big conglomerates actually gets put into place. And for me, uh, I think they probably wouldn't mind if the yen was a little bit weaker here and a little bit more imported inflation helps the domestic <laughs> wages situation, makes the prices start to go up in a domestic sense as you bring in more imported inflation again. Um, this is a nice virtuous circle. And they've been really, really lucky. They've been able to get out of this policy, which they've been stuck in for uh, you know, a couple of decades now.